Hey there, Father Michael here. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 7 says, Pray without ceasing. Thinking about that scripture today, and I'm also thinking about back when I was 14 years old, which, you know, was back in the black and white era. Um, I was 14, and it was summertime, and I injured my hip, broke part of my hip uh, in the baseball season, uh, just kind of a freak uh, accident. And as a result of that injury, I was on crutches for a good part of my freshman year of high school. I already had learned to despise PE because what is it about people who teach PE and who coach. Man, they are annoying. So annoying. But anyway, so I hated it. And I figured out pretty darn quickly that as long as I, you know, insisted that I had pain in my hip or if I somehow affected a little limp, um, then the PE teacher uh, didn't make me participate in any way in gym class winning. <laughs> the problem was I was overusing those crutches. And despite the fact that my medical doctor was mystified as to why I was still having discomfort um, and insisting that I had to get rid of the crutches because I was messing up my back muscles as well as my spine, I really wasn't going to hear it because you know, I had some serious benefits by by being semi-crippled uh, throughout that school year. So I milked the situation for as long as I could. And then later, the real consequences started to manifest. I was working as an underage bartender and waiter, and I started to have serious back issues. For a short time there, I lived with my grandparents. And, you know, if there's one thing that we old people have in abundant supply, it's pills. So I managed to get some pain pills, some codeine pain pills from my grandmother. Um, but of course, I'm making the mistake of mixing those with alcohol because I'm pending bar and the house policy was mandatory drink uh, after every shift. Yeah, it was that kind of place. Um, it, but it really didn't help. And so I went to the doctor and I got my own supply of muscle relaxants. Um, those two did not work. I got talked into going to see uh, a chiropractor. Now, I know some of you are all about the chiropractic thing, but look, it's not science. It's not medicine. It's a philosophy. It's a philosophy. So that did not work. Cracking my spine, which hurts. And I left there in more discomfort than when I arrived. Uh, uh, well, a complete waste of time and money. So I would continue to come home from my job night after night after night with back issues. Sometimes not too bad, sometimes really bad to the point where I couldn't even get a good night's sleep. This literally went on for years until I happened to be riding in the back of a conversion van and I was in an accident. Someone hit the van broadside and I was getting up uh, for some reason uh, while the van was moving and I was thrown uh, against the wall, the inside wall of the van. Well, that really messed me up. Now those back muscles are in constant spasm and so bad some days that I'm hunched over like, you know, a 98 year old man uh, who had had polio back in the 19 teens or something to the point it's even hard to breathe sometimes because breathing makes my back hurt. Well, I had just 
started a new job in a new city, which meant I had to find a new doctor. And this guy happily was young and a DO, which means he knows more than just a regular MD. And so as I'm sitting on the exam table waiting to meet this new doctor, he walks in and he takes a look at me sitting there on the exam table and he says, why are you slumped over like that? Sit up straight, put your shoulders back. I have thought a little bit on the blunt side there, but then he explained that my bad posture was making absolutely everything 10 times worse. And that unless and until I corrected the posture and strengthened my core muscles, things weren't going to get any better. I was not going to have any healing going on. So he gave me a very uncomfortable injection or two in my back that day. One star out of five, do not recommend. Um, and that seemed to help a little bit. He did give me my own supply of muscle uh, relaxers. Um, uh, and I did go back a couple more times uh, to get additional injections, but he had made me agree that I would also work on my abdominal muscles and be hypervigilant about my posture throughout the day. Of course, you know, I was not going to make all of this go away overnight because I did six crunches and stood up straight, in, uh, you know, in the line at Kroger, but I agreed to give it a college try anyway, especially since I had been messing around with this back thing for over a decade by that point. So that's what I did. I monitored my posture throughout the day, whether I was sitting down at my desk or cooking or running around uh, taking the trash out or cleaning the house or whatever, I was just super mindful. And gradually, week by week, I felt a little better. And I eventually stopped going in for those injections in my back. It turned out that something as simple as changing my posture and strengthening my core those things were exactly what I had needed to do. All of those years of physical therapy, massages, uh, Nazi era spine cracking from the chiropractor and, and all the medication in the world, none of those things did a darn thing for me. But those two simple things, posture, strengthen the core, those things, made all the difference. That was probably 40 years ago, and I have not had any back pain since. Drop the mic. There is, of course, a spiritual dimension to this little story. Let's start with the core the core muscles, the core values that we say we believe in. The things we really believe are the things we spend time on, the things we consciously engage in. So if we say that we believe in God or in the power of the universe, and if we further say that we believe God's abundance surrounds us at every moment, kind of like water surrounds a fish in an aquarium, well, then we need to keep that foremost in our minds and hearts. Strengthen the core. Keep that right there, you know? Let that inform the way we think, the way we speak, the way we act. We can't waste time getting distracted by other people's nonsense because people are just straight up annoying sometimes. To make Jesus weep. So there's nothing we can do about them. And just like I needed to be mindful and, and very vigilant about my physical posture to strengthen my back, so too all of us need to be mindful of how we carry ourselves in this world, how we behave in this world. 
I was parked behind someone at Big Lots just yesterday, and it had some evangelical right-wing Christian-y stuff, anti-abortion, family that prays together. And I saw the woman get out of her car. And so I'm following behind her kind of, you know, randomly. And she is talking trash about people to someone on the phone. The most judgmental, petty, kind of negative stuff. And I thought, this is why people think Christians are full of shit. This is exactly why. We're all great about wanting, you know, we want to fix you. We're going to focus on your behavior, but we're going to do whatever we damn well want. So to get back to the posture idea, we need to be mindful how we carry ourselves in this world. Other people are affected by our attitudes, words, decisions, and sometimes, like yesterday at Big Lots, people are affected by overhearing a conversation we really would have been embarrassed, you know, if we'd known. So what do we do? Strengthen the core. Maintain the posture. Find a scripture verse or a piece of poetry that speaks to you and repeat it to yourself mentally. Find a mantra. Recite it as you go about your day. Keep open those lines of communication between you and the universe, you and the God of your understanding. And at all times, be honest about what is really going on with you, how you're being challenged today. This life is not easy, I hate to tell you. And a lot of us, particularly this time of year, are on the struggle bus. It's okay. We're not alone. So talk to God. Tell God what's really going on. Say it out loud. I say this all the time to people. Saying it out loud, even if I pray aloud, it changes something. It just gets more real. So talk to God. Tell the truth. And then, of course, feel free to uh, sit down and shut up because I'm pretty sure that God has the same issue with you as God has with me. Namely, I'm so busy uh, bitching and whining about stuff I can't control, God can't even get a word in otherwise. Just a little thought for a Tuesday afternoon. Pray with me. Loving God. We open our hearts to your divine healing presence in this moment of prayer. Grateful for the abundance with which you surround us. Help us today to put aside our ego just a little bit better. To listen to the advice of others that you send our way. But also to spend some time in the silence to hear what it is you've been trying to tell us, but that we have so far ignored because we're too busy focused on things outside ourselves. We ask your blessing on all those who struggle with addictions, whether that be sex, alcohol, drugs, gambling, or any other negative behavior. And we ask simply that you show them the way forward. Show them the value of human connection and community. And for those of us who struggle to live our core values and to maintain a good posture in this world, we simply ask that we be given the grace to do a little bit better today than we did yesterday. And for that, we thank you. Amen. Have a good day.